Have you ever wanted to become rich? Yeah. Have you ever wanted to plunge into an ecosystem and obliterate all of the wildlife and steal all of its natural resources? Have you wanted to also do this as a drunk, inexperienced dwarf? I'm drinking it. No way. I, I drank it. What's gonna happen? I am so drunk. Oh my god. Oh, look at me spinning. This is not me. I'm not even doing this. Look, bro, what? I can't. I'm cooked. I'm cooked. Then look no further than Deep Rock Galactic. What the fuck was that? Hey, look where I am. What the hell was that? Deep Rock Galactic is a game about guns, murder, mining, and riches. And I absolutely love it. Maybe not as much as some people, but I definitely do love it. I've been playing Deep Rock off and on since I bought it way back in May of 2019. And a few weeks ago, I had the idea to completely wipe my save that didn't have anything on it and start anew. The goal of today's video is simple. Prestige Scout once. I wanted to regain the lost interest I once had for this game and learn all of the new things Ghost Ship has added since last playing a year and a half ago. This video will include wildlife obliteration, unlocking new weaponry, sabotaging Deep Rock's competitors, and most importantly of all, becoming rich. So without further delay, let us proceed with the destruction. To achieve our goal of becoming the legend of Deep Rock Galactic, we must first start with the basic assignment of landing into the planet of Hoxus 4 and extracting 200 Morkite. A very simple mission that will reward us with our very first paycheck. For us Mitten Squad fans, rest in peace. This is where the real game begins. One of the first things we see after emerging from the drop pod is this, gold. The most cathartic thing to ever bear witness to, other than an Outdoor Boys video. Not a lot happened on this mission considering it has been a while since me and my friends played Deep Rock and we are currently on Hazard 2, the second easiest difficulty to be on out of the 5 difficulties. But before we move on to the rest of the video, I want to quickly explain the role that the class I am playing as provides to the team. Scout. Arguably the easiest class to learn in the game. You start out with a submachine gun, shotgun, a flare gun, and the best thing in this entire game. The grappling hook. This thing is the best item to grace the entire planet. With a grappling hook, you use it to access normally hard to reach mineral deposits or outright inaccessible areas to get either more resources for your team or to scout ahead. Oh, I see what I did there. But be warned, going alone as scout does not typically result in good things happening. <gasps> There's a grabber! Oh, oh my god! Because Scout's loadout is not so powerful, and quite frankly, most of his weapons kind of suck, you'll mainly be the one rocking the most things mine at the end of the mission instead of getting a ton of kills. How did- what- you- what the fuck, guys? Sure, you'll still absolutely dominate the wildlife, but you'll mainly be playing Minecraft more so than Doom. Oh, and hey, speaking about playing Minecraft, take a look at what we found here. A gold chunk. The second most cathartic thing to run into. Shortly after becoming rich, we finish. Fuck. We finished extracting the 200 more kite, plus achieving the secondary objective by collecting the 15 apocalypse blooms and make our way over to the drop pod, where nothing of value was lost, and we complete the mission successfully. Ow. Leave! Leave! Get in! Get in! Get in! Get in! The Bennett killed me. <laughs> Bye, bud! The next mission we swiftly move on to is an egg hunt, where we commit atrocities onto the wildlife even further by acquiring four alien eggs so that we can cook some incredible scrambled eggs for later. The annoying part of egg hunts are the random swarms that you could potentially get by disturbing the eggs in the nest they are in. There are two types of swarms that can happen when disturbing these eggs. A normal swarm that is pretty unremarkable and goes unnoticed by mission control, or an actual swarm where Mission Control warns us of the natives trying to steal back their property. So, you know what this ultimately means. Still shooting me. Oh, I'm dead. And I fell down and died. Yep, because I couldn't use my, sh my scout thing. Oh, that's good. That's great. So, yeah, that wasn't supposed to happen. Um, okay, let's quickly run that one back. Here we go. And just like that, we have completed the second mission. 
on to the third mission. The third mission we are moving on to is this one, a liquid Morkite mission. Management deemed it wasn't enough that we were giving them Morkite in its solid form, so now we have to go and refine it in its liquid form. Oh boy, I sure do love the economy. The point of this mission is to connect three pipelines to the three bursting liquid Morkite deposits placed around the map, and defend these pipelines against the hordes of irritating protesters. Oh, you don't like that we are destroying your ecosystem due to capitalist greed? Time to die, sweaty. Since we are now level 5 and have access to a bunch of different upgrades, we have decided to place the difficulty permanently at Hazard 3, to give us and the native wildlife an equal chance to bully each other. Occasionally, we do move it up to Hazard 4 depending on how many people we have, the cave length and complexity, and what upgrades we have, but it will most likely remain on Hazard 3. If you don't agree with us going on Hazard 3, make sure to dislike the video. Ooh. The annoying part of refining the liquid Morkite is finding the damn deposits in the first place, like in this instance a few levels into the future. The deposit for us spawned all the way at the tippity top of the map, forcing us to drill and mine all the way up there to connect the pipeline, because there was no other way to connect the pipeline. So, if we didn't have a driller that time, shit was definitely going to hit the fan. But anyways, back to the mission at hand. After slaughtering maybe hundreds of protesters in the region, we fix, boom, bim, bomb, bam, the pipelines to the refinery and make the necessary preparations to defend ourselves against the angry natives. Once defending ourselves against the protesters, we ship the Morkite back to management, wait for the drop pod to land, and leave so that we can quickly move on to the fourth mission. You know what? I'm just gonna say it. I don't like this next mission. Every single aspect about this mission is just boring. Your goal is to salvage two mules that were abandoned by another Deep Rock team, and after doing this, you must uplink to mission control and refuel the lost team's abandoned drop pod. Sounds fun, right? Nope. This mission, for whatever reason, places all of the objectives in tight areas with little to no navigation, and introduces a new gimmick that is incredibly stupid. In order to uplink to mission control and refuel the drop pod, you must stand in this extremely confined green circle that gives you no choice but to stand in the circle, and if your entire team steps out or gets kicked out, the bar begins to go down. So, let's say, hypothetically, that my entire team dies. Now, let's also say, hypothetically, as a single scout, I can't really do shit against these hordes of protesters. Now, let's also say, hypothetically, that I hate this goddamn mission and it makes me want to kill- <clears throat> So yeah, this mission can just delete itself from the game. Just please. Thankfully, the next mission is a lot more enjoyable, and it's one we've already covered, an egg hunt. Egg hunts are very simple, fun, and allow me to take hold of Manifest Destiny and slaughter all of the wildlife on their land. What a beautiful sight to behold. This is around the time that I realized that Scout is honestly not all that. Sure, his grappling hook is really awesome. However, outside of that, he is insanely weak. Us locking ourselves on Hazard 3 or 4 is very beneficial to my teammates, but to me, definitely not. I began to notice that my guns were just not doing the amount of damage that I was expecting from them, and I started getting more frustrated with how many bullets I had to put into a single grunt. Like, it's still alive! Like, come on! These fucking weapons! A single glyphid grunt takes six bullets to kill with my submachine gun. That is just downright horrid. If it's a grunt guard, then welp, guess I'm not doing any damage to that thing. Most of this can be chalked up as me sucking because it definitely is, but it's not going to stop me from coping any harder. Fortunately for us, this mission is an egg hunt, so we can just speedrun through it like pop, and the mission is over, allowing us to slide over to the next mission with ease. This mission plays a lot like an egg hunt, but instead of retrieving and cooking their young, we are now after their diamonds. That's right gents, we have gone after their young, and now we're going after their minerals. This mission also has a special twist, as there's actually no mule that joins you on the expedition. 
You have to walk the diamonds over to this heavy machinery called the Minehead and deposit them into it then ship it off to management. I actually like these fetch quest styled missions as their pace is a lot better than this and are actually a lot of fun. Another reason I like playing these fetch quest missions is because I'm playing Scout. A lot of these mineral deposits and other resources spawn in really high places so that just makes me the perfect man for the job. We grab seven of the diamonds, jam them into the mine head, ship them off to management, wait for our drop pod to land, and this time we all actually make it in on time and complete the mission as a team. So now finally, on to the next mission. Nope. Nope. This mission is boring and took an entire hour of our lives because of this stupid Morkite deposit all the way at the top of the map. So I'm skipping it. Naturally, after that mission, me and my friends didn't want to see a piece of shit mission like that again. So we bounced around the space rig for a little while until my friend somehow did this. For, uh... What the fuck hey, was what that? The fuck? Hey, look where I am. What the <laughs> hell was that? After that barrel fiasco, we, with extreme efficiency, dominated Jetty Boot, scarfed down an entire pint of beer, hit some absolutely ferocious moves on the dance floor, and jumped into the drop pod to tackle the second to last mission. Ladies and gentlemen, after all of this time, all of these missions, all of the slaughter is about to pay off very quickly. We are on the last mission of the 10 mission assignment we have been required to do. Me and my friends are tasked with eliminating two dreadnoughts, the worst Hawks' 4 can throw at us. These things do a lot of damage, have a lot of health, and most importantly, are very, very mean. Fortunately for us, we have gone through a lot to prove ourselves, and we have decked ourselves out to the best of our abilities. Without any more delay, let us drop in and eliminate these creatures. Walking out of the drop pod, we are faced with the most dangerous environment yet, the Magma Core. The Magma Core is Deep Rock's deepest mining site, and for good reason, as lava flows everywhere and does heaps of damage if you are caught on a geyser, in a quake, or are unfortunate enough to be blown up by an explosive plant. Bidding that the last mission for this very long assignment takes place in this region. Before challenging the Dreadnoughts, we make sure that we mine any deposits that we see grab any valuables we see as well, and completely wipe out any opposition before the battle takes place. After doing this, we prepare ourselves for war and disturb the egg the Dreadnought is currently awaiting us in. So, there you have it folks, the 10 mission assignment has been completed. However, we are still very far from the prestige. The goal of the video was to prestige scout, and we haven't. But, we now have finally free reign to dominate all of the regions and all of the missions that Deep Rock Galactic has in store for us. So, 
What will be the first thing we do as free dwarves? Making money. The first beer we get after completing the assignment is the pots of gold, which is a concoction that upon drinking allows us to obtain 100% more gold when we mine a gold deposit. And it just so happens that the mission we are currently given to do is a Morkite mission, which is usually an expedition that is ripe with tons and tons of gold. So naturally, we destroy every single gold deposit we see. On top of that, we find both a Jadis chunk and a gold chunk at the exact same time, alongside ending the mission with 600 pieces of gold. Good lordy, we're rich. The next goal we are trying to reach is to unlock the mineral trading network. The mineral trading network is essentially this game's stock market, where you can buy minerals that you don't have a lot of and sell a bunch of minerals that you have a lot of. I rarely use this terminal because the fun of the game is grabbing all of the minerals in a mission, but it's still nice to have options. Anyways, the next mission we tackle holds our first non-objective boss fight, courtesy of the Critical Corruption update. This abomination you see here is referred to as a Lithophage Corruptor, which infects the ground it slides on by placing these annoying ass little thorns everywhere that do a ridiculous amount of damage and sends these dumbass worms that also do a ridiculous amount of damage. The only way to damage this thing is to call in special weaponry made exclusively to take these things down. Unfortunately for me, however, my friends are kind of dumb and have no idea how to use this special weaponry. So instead of putting this thing out of its misery, we spend 12 minutes fighting for our lives in the worst generated area I've ever bear witness to, constantly fighting waves and waves of enemies, and even after slaughtering the damn thing, my friends both die and I'm left grappling around to dodge everything and just, just barely escape with my body intact. So yeah, that was extremely horrible. Let's move on. The next operation we move on to involves industrial sabotage. A new mining company is trying to expand its horizons into the planet of Hawks' 4. As greedy capitalist stockbrokers, this is simply an act of war, so we are tasked with destroying their defenses and stealing all of their data. Leaving the drop pod, we are immediately introduced to these little guys, burst turrets. Things that are without a doubt the most annoying thing in this game. They are turrets, so of course they lock onto you and do a lot of damage, but that's not the only thing in this cave. No, no, no. A little deeper into the cave and we are introduced to the belligerent alcoholic siblings of the burst turrets, sniper turrets. If you think burst turrets do a lot of damage, then wait till you see how much damage sniper turrets do. Hazard 3 by the way. This mission also has a new gimmick not seen before by us yet, hacking pods. You, you see, see, in order to steal their data, we need to hack these two power stations. And to do so requires these little guys, the hacking drones. They're actually super defenseless, so it is up to us to defend these innocent, hardworking, and definitely not sentient drones. After defending the cute little drones twice, we now must make our way to over where the data is stored. And where is it stored, you may ask? Well, in this thing, the Caretaker. This is the rival company's very last defense to prevent us from stealing their information. The Caretaker is a boss that can and will do heaps of damage to you and thrives off of catching you off guard with his appendixes and sniper turrets. So, let's get to it. Okay, we got the platforms. They have to, now one of the eyes is going to open. We're going to have to shoot it. This other eye opened on this side. Holy crap. Get it, get it, get it, get it! We did it, boys. Oh. Easy. Easy peasy. Now, even on hazard three, that's not a cakewalk. And no stretch of the imagination is that a pushover. Hazard five. <laughs> I don't even want to imagine Hazard 5. I think that's The appendage how we would just died. instant kill you, man. No, we did Hazard 4. After accomplishing this heist, let us hope that the rival company will never set foot on our territory again. Otherwise, we're going to have to intervene once again. A few missions down the line with an extra friend, we make it to another Protect the Drill Dozer mission, otherwise known as Protect Doretta for the vets out there, that is also a mission that contains a gold rush. Using our previous knowledge of the pots of gold, we are lucky enough to be given the beer on this exact mission, so me and my squad are able to make copious amounts of money. So, I think you already know what we're going to do to the gold deposits in this mission. Yep, you guessed right. We're going to absolutely demolish every single deposit in sight and pocket all of the cash ignoring our irreversible damage to the ecosystem, alongside slaughtering hundreds upon hundreds of wildlife and stealing their funny looking orange orb. After all was said and done, we ended the mission with over 1,200 gold, with a grand total of $10,000 being awarded to us at the end of the mission. Oh. Now, for the vigilant among you, you might have noticed that the XP being rewarded to me versus the amount of missions we're doing is not really adding up. And you would be correct. I have elected to ignore some of the missions as they were either boring or we failed them miserably or they were too repetitive and we've already covered them. 
You might think, well, some stuff must have happened, right? Well, no. Missions I decided to gloss over weren't worth my time, and so by extension are definitely not worth yours. Only the interesting missions make it into my video. Speaking of interesting missions, boss fight time. Man, that thing is getting diffed. He is getting, yeah, he's getting absolutely dookied on, man. Oh, the where the fuck? Goodbye, bitch! Diffed. Nice! Diffed. Okay, I'm calling leash supply. I need it. They're all chasing me, like, holy fuck. Is it coming after me? What the hell did <laughs> I do, man? I'm out of here, bitch! Look my Come nuts. On, there's like one HP left. Get it! Hit it! Easy. Uh, come on, he's kinda nice. Got it. Okay, we, need, a, oh, we need, need another. I need another supply. Oh, hey, hey, bro. Hey, bro. Ow. Holy shit, man. Oh, the Just dipped. The ball. Holy fuck. Perfect. Come on. Easy. Got it. Bitch! <laughs> Bitch! Dude, I, I hit, hit the side. I hit like some weird ass geometry. I should have made it in, but I hit some like protruding invisible you, wall yeah, you hit, and you I hit, bounced you hit, off you of like it. Edge. Ironically enough, we have gone this whole video using the default build of Scout. I started getting used to the submachine gun and shotgun about 15 hours ago as the more I used these weapons, the more skillful I became. However, I think it is time to switch it up. So me and my friend complete a couple missions so that I can welcome a new weapon into my arsenal, the Plasma Carbine. This firearm is kind of silly. Instead of having a normal magazine, the gun is powered by a battery that holds 750 capacity. You don't reload this weapon like a typical firearm either, and instead you have to watch this meter here to prevent it from overheating. There are upgrades to make it overheat less, but not by much, but can still kick some major ass in the right scenarios. I never relied on this weapon too much, as the mini Uzis I acquired a few missions ago does an insane amount of damage and holds a lot of bullets, so I use this thing a hell of a lot more. On the topic of new firearms, this scout weapon is probably the most visually appealing weapon in the game, and that's the M1000 Classic. This gun's real-life counterpart, the M1 Garand, is a highly recognized and highly rejoiced firearm known by many. The signature ping. The damage. The sound the bullet makes when it ejects itself out of the weapon at hundreds of feet per second. It's just... It's just beautiful. Just downright beautiful. But now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time. Time for us to commence the last mission before I prestige. We've gone through so much in such little time. However, everything must come to a natural conclusion. The last mission we have decided to tank through is Industrial Sabotage with Golden Bugs and Shield Disruption. Shield Disruption is a mutator that completely removes everyone's shield, so fitting that this is the last mission we must complete. So, for one final time, let us get to it.
dream come true! I'm proud of you. You've done well for yourself since you joined the company. I recall you joining up as a scrawny greenbeard and figured you'd join the dead down in the deeps in short order. However, consider my position changed. You've grown into your role and have more than proven yourself. It's my personal pleasure to announce that management has granted your promotion. Rock and Stone Miner, well done. Oh, sweet. Hazard 5.